Hello, boys and girls. It is so good to see you again. I have missed you this week. I sure hope you had a fun time. I hope you got to do all that you wanted to do. Some of you maybe even started some school back, and I hope that is going well. I just want you to know that I am thinking about you and praying for you each day. And speaking of prayer, that's how we always start our time, isn't it? We start with our prayer times, and we have our four different ways of praying. And today, why don't we do our confession prayers, where we tell God that we are sorry for something. But what do we need first? That's right, our stuffed animal. So you run and get yours, and I'm going to count backwards from 10. Ready, set, Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Welcome back. All right, let's do our confession prayers, and Miss Amy's going to start, and you can finish. Are you ready? Bow your head, close your eyes. Dear God, we love you so much, and I thank you so much for this time with these boys and girls. And Father, I just want to confess and say I'm sorry for the times that I am lazy, and I do not do what I'm supposed to do because I'm lazy. Amen. All right, boys and girls, put your stuffed animal away, and let's go through our four Bible truths. Our first question is, what word means that God always keeps his promises? That's right, faithful. Our second question is, can we trust God sometimes, or can we trust God all the time? That's right, you can trust God all the time, can't you? Our fourth question is, what word means that God knows and sees everything that we do? That's right, it's the word omniscient. Can you say that with me, boys and girls? Omniscient, where God knows and he sees everything that we do, okay? Our fourth question is, what did Jesus come to save us from? Yes, he came to save us from the punishment of our sins. The things that we do that go against God is what Jesus came to save us from. Great job, boys and girls. Now, if you remember, we've been talking about Jacob and we've been talking about his family. And remember, he had 12 sons, didn't he? And last week, we got to talk about one of his favorite son. Remember, we talked about his favorite son that he liked more than all the others. And do you remember what his name was? That's right, boys and girls. His name was Joseph, okay? And Joseph's father gave something to him that he didn't give any of the other brothers. He gave something to him. Do you remember what that was? Yes, it was a colorful coat, wasn't it? Joseph got this colorful coat. And then Joseph had two dreams about his family, didn't he? And he told those dreams to his brothers. Remember, it was about the sheaves of wheat and the little sheep that were going to bow down to the one, and then about the sun, moon, and stars, where the little stars were going to bow down to the sun and the moon. And those dreams meant that Joseph would one day rule over all of his brothers, and that they would bow down to him. Now, because of this, because of the special treatment that Joseph got from his brother, from his father, and then because of these dreams that he told them about, the brothers did not like Joseph at all, did they? No, they hated him. And they got rid of him, didn't they? They got rid of him by first, they threw him in the pit, and then they saw the traitors going by to Egypt. So they took him out of the pit and they sold him to the traitors so that they would take him off to Egypt. And that's where we're gonna find Joseph today. He's been sold in Egypt to a man by the name of Potiphar, 
okay? So we're going to travel today to Egypt with Joseph and find out how Joseph is doing in Egypt, okay? First of all, we see that Potiphar has Joseph live with him, okay? Potiphar has Joseph living with him, all right? And you know, it was very hard. It was hard for Joseph. He had to live with people that wasn't his family. He had to learn to eat new food and wear different clothes. And he even had to learn to speak a different language. It was really kind of hard for him. So you can imagine how he must have felt, right? Now, let me ask you, what kind of face is this? That's right, it's a happy face, okay? Joseph didn't sit around feeling sorry for himself and going, oh, woe is me, I'm having to be in a new place. No, he knew that God was with him. And so Joseph was happy and he tried to do his best to do his job, the new job that he had, the very best that he could. And so, can you show me what a happy face looks like? That's right, you show all your teeth, don't you? So let's read about Joseph's new job with Potiphar, okay? In our Bible, when we turn to Genesis chapter 39, we're gonna look at verse four, okay? And it says, so Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. That him is Potiphar, okay? And then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, he put under his authority. <gasps> Joseph worked hard and God blessed him, didn't he? God, Potiphar came along and he gave Joseph a very special job to be over all of it, right? He was to be over the whole house and he was gonna have all authority, okay? And it said he was an overseer. Now, do you know what that word means, boys and girls? Overseer? Well, an overseer is like a boss, the boss who is over everyone or all the people. And he makes sure that everyone does what their job is, okay? Now, let me show you this face. Can you tell me what kind of face that is? It's a trusting face, okay? Potiphar trusted Joseph in his job, okay? And he didn't worry about anything. He knew that if he put Joseph in charge, Joseph was gonna do his job and he could trust Joseph that he was gonna make sure everyone else did their job day after day. So God watched over Joseph and showed him and helped him to do his job the very best that he could. But you know what? Things were about to change. Do you see this face right here? The Bible says that Joseph was handsome and that Potiphar's wife really liked him and she thought she was in love with Joseph. And she kept trying to get Joseph to be alone with her day after day after day, all the time. Well, one day, do you see this face? <gasps> Uh-oh. One day when everyone else was out of the house, she grabbed Joseph's clothes and she tried to make him stay with her. And Joseph told Potiphar's wife, no. He said, no, no, no that he was not gonna stay with her and he ran away. But Joseph knew he had to get out of there fast. But uh-oh, do you see what an uh-oh face looks like? Oh no, Potiphar's wife was really mad at Joseph and she, because he ran away and she was so angry, do you see this angry face? She was so angry about it that when Potiphar came home, she lied to Potiphar and she had kept Joseph's coat and she tried to hurt Joseph and said, he was trying to hurt me. But that wasn't true, was it? Because she lied. So how do you think this made Potiphar feel? That's right, he was angry too. He was very mad at Joseph because he believed his wife. He thought she was telling the truth, all right? So let's read what happens to Joseph in 39, chapter 39, verse 20. 
okay? When all of this happened and all of this was going on with the wife, okay? She said, your servant did to me after this manner and this made Potiphar angry. So then Joseph's master, who was Potiphar, took him and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. Oh no, now we find poor Joseph in the prison. He was thrown into prison and that's a very sad, even though he did the right thing. Oh, and this must have made Joseph very sad too. What do you think it looks like when you're sad? Can you make a sad face? But you know what? God called the jailer, the jailer to be kind to Joseph, the one who was over all of the jail. And he became very kind to Joseph. And he put Joseph, guess what? In charge of all the prison. <gasps> wow! God was still with Joseph even though he was in prison. And one day, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, got very angry with two of his servants, the chief baker who baked his bread and the chief cupbearer who would come and try his food for him and who poured his drinks. And Pharaoh knew these men were in prison and he put them in prison where Joseph was in charge, okay? Well, one day, Joseph noticed that they were very sad and he asked them what was wrong and they said, We've had these dreams, okay, and we don't understand them. But Joseph knew that God could help him explain what these dreams meant, okay? So the cupbearer told Joseph that he had dreamed about a grapevine. And he said, what does that mean? And he had picked up the grapes and he squeezed the juice out of them and into Pharaoh's cup and he gave it to the Pharaoh. And Joseph said that his dream meant that the Pharaoh would forgive the cupbearer and give him back his job serving drinks. Well, Joseph asked the cupbearer to remember him when he went, when he was released, when he was able to go back and do his job. Please remember me and help me get out of prison too. All right? Well, this caused a very happy face, doesn't it? Things sounded pretty good for the cupbearer, didn't it? He was probably very happy, okay? Well, the baker also shared his dream with Joseph and he dreamed that he had three baskets, okay? And on one, on top of one of them, there were all kinds of yummy baked things for the Pharaoh. But the birds came and ate all of them. Oh no. So Joseph explained that his dream meant that the Pharaoh was still angry with the baker, that he was not happy with him anymore. Oh no. Well, when the baker shared this dream, he must have been afraid of what was gonna happen to him. Can you make a scared face like this picture? <gasps> well, sure enough, three days later, the cupbearer got his job back, serving the Pharaoh his drinks. But Pharaoh was still angry with this baker and ordered him to be killed. Everything had happened just as Joseph had said. He had explained the dreams very well, but you know what happened? Remember how Joseph had asked the cupbearer when he was gone on back to his job, if he would please tell the Pharaoh about him and remember him and get him out of prison? The cupbearer forgot about Joseph and he forgot about helping him. And so Joseph was left in prison. Poor Joseph, he didn't understand. He was very trusting and he thought that the cupbearer would surely would remember him. But you know what? He trusted God anyway. He was with Joseph through all of this that had happened. The good things and the bad things. And jo Joseph knew that God had a plan for his life. And he was in control of everything. Remember our word, sovereign? that God is in control of everything. And he knew that God could see and know everything that was going on with Joseph, our word omniscient, right? And we're gonna learn more about God's plan for Joseph in our next lesson. 
But for this lesson, boys and girls, I want you to remember to be like Joseph. Trust God. He knows and he sees everything. And we can trust him to take care of us through everything. Because boys and girls, he loves you very much. And Miss Amy loves you very much too. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Keep trusting Jesus. Bye.